Hello, welcome to chapter 6, section 4, factoring polynomials. And in this video, we're going to talk about factoring a new method called the sum or the difference, because there's two of them, but they're very similar, of two cubes. In the previous video, I'll show you my paper that I used, we talked about the difference of two squares. And if you recall, when we did this problem, we said that we don't have the sum of two squares. That's not going to be able to be factored. But guess what? It actually does work for the sum and difference of two cubes. All right, so we're talking squares, we're talking cubes. What do we actually mean here? And yeah, they do come from the, ge the geometry. Why do we call the perfect squares square? Because like if I said seven squared, that's the area 49 of a geometric square that's seven units on one side and seven units on the other side. Same thing with a cube, except now it's gonna be volume. So you just, like if I said, what's seven cubed? That would be the volume of a cube that is seven units on each edge. All right, so that's where the, that's where the, the nicknames come from. We're gonna be talking about perfect cubes. We need to recognize the perfect cubes. So I'm gonna make a list of them for you so that you can, I just got, sorry, something was happening. Let me get this done here real quick, sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna make a list for you of the perfect, first 10, sorry, not all of them, there's an infinite number of them, perfect cubes. Have this nearby, you're gonna need this to recognize. And, and it's not hard to come up with, all right? All I'm gonna do is say one to the third power equals one. So one is a perfect cube. 2 to the third power means 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. You're going to be seeing 8 a lot of times. 3 to the third power, which is 3 times 3 times 3, is 27. And the thing about the cubes is that they, they kind of blow up. Watch what happens. The squares do too, but these really blow up. 4 to the third power is four times four times four. 16 times four is 64. Five to the third power, five times five times five is 125. We'll do the first 10. Six to the third power, six times six times six, 36 times six is 216. Seven cubed, is seven times seven times seven, lost my place, which is 49 times seven, which is 343. I know it's getting, getting a little ridiculous now, isn't it? Eight to the third power, eight times eight is 64, 64 times another eight is 512. Nine to the third power, nine times nine times nine, or 81 times nine, is 729. And finally, 10 to the third power, this one's actually easy. We already know it, it's 1,000. So have these numbers nearby so that when you see the problems, you're going to be able to recognize that you're dealing with a perfect cube. Since the problems are gonna say factor by using the sum or difference of perfect cubes, expect to see those in, in it, all right? Also, look for x to the third power, which is obviously x cubed. But not only that, but what if I take x to the third power and I raise it to the second power? That's going to give me x to the sixth power. So other perfect cubes, um, especially if I'm going to be involving variables, are going to be x to the third, x to the sixth, x to the ninth, x to the twelfth. So we need to be able to recognize that too. All right, so got that out of the way with the perfect cubes. Pause that, look at that very carefully. You're going to be seeing me use that for, the, for um, these factoring problems. Okay, but what is the sum and difference of two cubes? Well, I have it right here for you. If I have some, a number to the third power being added, keep moving that around, being added to another number to the third power, then it factors into this. You gotta find out what 
the cube root of that is, okay? So if you see 125, then the A is gonna be the five. If you see X to the third power, then I'm gonna use X. It'll be whatever that A is, plus B, and then A to the second power, subtract A times B, plus B squared, okay? If I see a difference here, then instead of A plus B, I get A minus B, and instead of A to the second minus AB, I get A to the second plus AB, plus B squared happens either way. All right, um, let me, oh, I thought I had a blank piece of paper here nearby. I don't have enough room for the other one. Okay, I'll tell you what, um, maybe, maybe I might have room for it on one of the other things. Or actually, I think what I'll probably do is I'll do it in class, okay? I won't put it on the video. But what you can do is take this and multiply by that. Just use a multiplication chart. Foil's not gonna work, all right? Take this and multiply it by that, and then what's gonna happen is you're gonna get A times A squared, which is A cubed. You get the B times the B squared, which is B cubed, but everything else is going to, um, I don't like to use the word cancel, they're gonna add up to zero. So when I get A times negative AB, I get negative A squared B. And when I get B times A squared, I get positive A squared B. Those two are gonna to add together and get zero. So the middle term is gonna disappear. So I'll do that for you in class. I'll multiply those together in class so you can see where it comes from. Um, you don't have to worry about developing it. Just know how to use it for this case. And I know that that's hard for me. Like I said, I'll show you why it works. But as far as like how we got it, to be honest, it was just one of those cases where people were playing with things and eventually it worked out. Okay, there's no there's no real methodology to it. At least as far as I as far as I've ever been told. All right, so we're gonna factor these. What do we do every single time? Always check for a greatest common factor first. And here's the big clue. I'm supposed to factor by the difference or sum of, this would be sum, this would be difference. I'm supposed to factor by the difference or sums of perfect cubes. I don't have any perfect cubes here. Look at my perfect cubes. 1, 8, 27, 64. I don't see a 5 here. I don't see a 40 here. Over here, I mean. That's probably a big clue that I'm supposed to factor out the GCF first. So this is actually 5x times x to the third power, that's a cube, plus eight, that's a cube. So I have a common factor of 5x, which allows me to then keep working. <coughs> now, so this is actually, and this is what I'm gonna put up here, I'm gonna put this in my thinking box. x to the third power, obviously, is x to the third power. 8 is 2 to the third power. So I got to remember I've got the x and the 2. Uh, and I'll try to put this in. Uh, how did I do this? Okay. So I've got the sum of two cubes. So I'm going to have whatever my, whatever my a is plus my b. So this is going to be x plus 2. That x and that 2. And don't forget your 5x times a to the second power. Okay, so I've got x to the second power. Subtract that a times that b, so I'm going to subtract that x times that 2. Subtract 2x. And then the final part, I'm going to add the b squared when I use a and b, which means I'm going to add the 2 squared. 2 squared is 4. So there you go. Now, Here's, here's where we're headed with this one. Again, I'm going to remind you. What happens if I say, let this equal zero, what are the roots of this? All right, so if I let all this equal zero, I get 5x equals zero. So x equals zero, that's one of the roots. I get x plus 2 equals zero. So x equals negative 2. That works. This one over here, guess what? Let's go back to our factoring skills. What two numbers multiply to give 4? but add to give negative two, 
I got nothing. So this one, in order for me to find the factors, or in order for me to find the zeros, I can't find the factors anymore. In order for me to find the zeros, I have to do something else because it's quadratic. What do I do? Complete the square or quadratic formula. And that'll be that'll um, connect with um, the stuff we did in chapter five. Okay, let's do more problems with that. So I've got eight y to the third subtract twenty seven. I have no common factors. Always check the GCF first, but I don't have any common factors. I have y's here, but no y's here. I've got two times two times two. I've got three times three times three. No common factors. And please note, eight and twenty seven are perfect cubes. Cool. So what I'm thinking is that 2y to the third power gives me my 8y cubed. So it's 2 cubed, y cubed. And also, 3 to the third power gives me my 27. So let's see if I can squeeze that in. Hopefully you guys can see it. Yeah, you can, right? So now I'm going to do the difference. So this right here, I can also think of it this way. If I'm going to like follow my pattern with A's and B's, my A is being replaced with 2Y. My B is being replaced with 3. And, and the A and B are just placeholders, okay? People panic about, oh my God, I'm losing track of all the variables. A and B are not variables, okay? Variables are not letters that stand for numbers. Variables are measurements that we don't know. All right, so this is just a placeholder to show the pattern. I could have done the same thing as said triangle cubed, subtract square cubed, or actually I guess square cubed wouldn't be good. Uh, triangle cubed, subtract smiley face cubed is gonna be triangle subtract smiley face, triangle squared plus triangle times smiley face plus smiley face squared. It doesn't matter, it's just a symbol. It's just a symbol for a placeholder. So what do I get? I get 2y and 3 and for this one since I'm doing a difference I'm gonna do 2y minus 3 and then I take the 2y and I square it well 2 squared is 4 and y squared is y squared now I'm going to add and I'm gonna multiply these two things together 2y times 3 which gives me 6y and the last part I'm going to take that last that last thing, whether you call it B or whatever, that's a 3. 3 squared equals 9. And that's it. Been factored using the um, difference of two cubes. And as always, I know that I'm going fast with these videos, so pause it and rewind it if you need me to explain a little bit more. All right. Looks like I'm going to have the sum 8. 8 is on my list. That's a perfect cube. However, what about this z to the 6th power? Oh, remember when I did this? So, again, this is what I'm thinking. 2 to the 3rd power, that gives me the 8 that I have right there. But z, and look, those look the same when I write them, don't, don't I? So I put a line through it to look like a z. z to the 2nd power, then to the 3rd power, gives me my z to the 6th power. All right. All right, now I'm going to do one thing just because I like things to be kind of clean. This is not going to work if I have subtraction, but it is going to work because of addition. I just like it to be kind of in um, standard form or best form that we have. So I'm just going to turn this around. This is z to the 6th power plus 8. I just turned it around. Commutative property, it's fine. All right, everything else is going to be the same. So, this is where I do a plus b. Well, that's going to be z to the sixth power, oh, excuse me, z to the second power, excuse me, plus 2. Now, I take this z to the second power and I square it again, I get z to the fourth power. Here's my, here's my rule, I'm using this one. Now, I'm going to subtract. I'm going to multiply that times that, so I get 2z to the second power. And then I'm going to add that part squared. 2 squared is 4. 
and that's it. Kind of wish they hadn't used a Z because my Zs and twos look the same, but eh, it's okay. All right. Hopefully you guys can figure that out. If you don't like it, just use a different letter. It's fine. Um, now you're probably stressed out a little bit by the fact that I turned it around. Well, guess what? If I had not turned it around, I would have had two plus Z to the second power, four subtract two Z to the second power plus Z to the fourth power. These two things are the same. That one, I just turned them around. And this one, everything is just rearranged. The four moved to the front, the Z the fourth moved move to the end, and the middle term stayed the same. I just like doing everything in best form, okay? Which is standard form, sorry. All right, one more for this video. I look at my perfect cubes right here. I've still got it right here. Two and 16, I don't see any twos and 16s, okay? That probably means I have a greatest common factor. I also have x times x times x times x times x here and x times x here. So my common factor is gonna be two x to the second power. That leaves the other three x's multiplied for x to the third power, that's x cubed, subtract eight. Now, I was, I was laughing at this when I was um, putting together my sheets. How every problem has eight in it here 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 Why that's because You are rarely gonna see these monster cubes over here Dr. Berger likes to keep it kind of low. All right, so the 2 and the 27 are gonna show up 27 was here and That was basically it <laughs> But don't always count on that guys. I just want to point it out that that was kind of funny here I've got the difference two squares. X to the third power is literally X to the third power. So what's being cubed? Just the X. And as always, two to the third power gives me my eight. So I'll grab my paper and put my pattern here again. This is a difference, so I'm gonna use the difference. And I don't know if I said it earlier, but when you get a common factor, don't lose it. Make sure that you include it in the final solution. Don't lose it. So I've got x and 2, x subtract 2 times x squared plus 2 times x plus 2 to the second power, which is 4. And that's all there is to that one. So I'm sure we'll be talking about this more in class. Don't make it harder than it needs to be. Watch, look at this, look, look at the screen as carefully as you can. Watch the video, good luck.